Hello and welcome to the March Expo special, special adi uh, edition of the Bio Girls Academy. And this is your host Ming Yang. And today I have my guest Alexis from Bohon Bark. Hey Alexis, welcome. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> I love your background, absolutely cute. So tell us about your friends here. So these are all customers of mine. Actually, the one on this side over here yeah. is my dog. So she's a golden doodle. Her name is Willow. But the rest of mine are customers that have bought from me, and they're all wearing my branded bandanas around their necks. Oh, that's awesome. Well, so yeah. So uh, what kind of dogs do you have? So I have two golden doodles. So that's a mix of golden retriever and poodle. Uh -huh. But the dogs here, I believe that is a corgi. The one on the right, I think, is a mix. Mm -hmm. And to the very left, I think it's hidden by my name here, but I think that's a dash hound. Oh, and they've okay. all been customers of mine for years. <laughs> Great awesome. people. Great dogs. Yeah. So so um, how would you take care of them? So my dogs are kind of high maintenance. I think doodles get a bad rep because of how high maintenance they are. And I think that a lot of owners don't realize that going into it when they pick the breed. So with golden doodles, you have to do a lot of brushing. Otherwise their fur gets matted. It's like very fine hair. It's almost very human like mm. it's very like thin like mine. And so you have to brush it daily or 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 it mats. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that. And so they take them to the groomer and then the groomers end up having to shave them down almost to their skin because these poor dogs are totally matted. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the breed gets a bad rep, but it, you know, it has nothing to do with them. That's just work that the owners need to know going into getting the dog, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. Didn't be for sure. So actually I uh, myself is dog owner as well. And I have to, um, they're, they're actually from the same parents. Um, so my dog's name is Peach and Daisy. I've seen uh, Super Mario, Mario Brothers. Yes. <laughs> um, so actually, I, um, I adopted them from a rescue place. Um, so, you know, they're very tiny, five pounds or six pounds. Um, I wish I have a picture or I can show them. Um, actually, I'm in the hotel room in Las Vegas attending events, but Maybe next time I will show to our to our audience. Las Vegas, that yeah. sounds fun. <laughs> yes, work events, and I see our a lot of comments from our audience, and thank you so much. And you know, today our events we officially start um, in in nine minutes, uh, and we will dive into the conversation about business and helping small and medium business um, grow and uh, stay competitive in 2023. And that's why we have our um, very, very honored guest, guest speaker, Alexis, with us. And we will start that uh, in a few minutes. But we're just chatting about our dogs. And, um, you know, I have never had a dog before until last year. And, um, and then my dog's only one year old. Um, like I mentioned, they used to live with a, with a lady um, yeah. and she has to give them up. So we adopted them and I have kids. You know, it's just totally changed my life and my kids. Um, because they really do become a part of your family. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. And I had a lot to learn about um, yes. taking care of them, walking them, uh, training them. Um, but, you know, most importantly, the biggest impression I have is they're just making my life much better. Yes. Um, do you always have a dog when, like when you were a child? No. So actually, I, I think this is so funny. It's so a couple years ago, while I was still dating my fiance at the time, we oh. were just dating then, I went to his uncle's house mm -hmm. for a uh, barbecue that they were hosting. And I'd never been there before. And it was on a farm in Alabama. <laughs> Very long drive. So we drove there. We get to the farm. And they had eight dogs just oh. running around. It's a big farm. So there's a lot of space. Wow. And I'd never had dogs before. I'll be honest with you. I didn't even like dogs, really. I 
I thought they were dirty. They kind of uh-huh. scared me because I never really had any growing up. Yeah. Um, and something about that experience, we were on the farm and I'm playing with these eight dogs and they're all different breeds. They rescue all of their dogs. So it was retrievers and a, a lot of mutts, mm-hmm. just beautiful, friendly little pups. And I'm playing with all of them and I fell in love. And I remember at the time I lived in Ohio. So I drove to Alabama which is t- like more towards the bottom of the States. Uh-huh. It was about an eight hour drive. And I remember driving wow. back up to Ohio thinking about those eight dogs. And I remember texting my boyfriend uh-huh. at the time and saying, I'm getting a dog. Like, I I don't know what's come over me, but I need one in my life. And so I got mm-hmm. my first puppy, Willow. And yeah. that is the golden doodle to yeah. the side of me. Yeah. And she's my first ever dog. And uh, she changed my life. And I know we're going to get into this later in the webinar, but she yeah. has completely inspired my business because I'd never uh-huh. had dogs before. I'd never really been a part of the dog industry. Yeah. yeah. But just bringing her into my home and in my life, Mm -hmm. changed everything and it she's inspired an entire company now that's amazing so you know for our audience definitely um alexis will share her story about you know combining her passion with her business how she created the whole business and became um smb you know small business owner because of the passion and love for the dogs um and i you know when we talk about pets industry it's not just dogs they're also cats and there are also other pets as well so Um, many cats yeah and i'm just curious we can guess do you think we have more um dog per person dog people in the room or do you think we have more cats so how about you drop um what pets do you have um in the in the comments so you know we can see what kind of Pets people have pets. Yes, please <laughs> let us know. I I find this topic very interesting because yeah. it depends on what part of the world you're in, mm-hmm. um, what type of pet is more yeah. popular in your country yeah. and in your region. Yeah. Like in America, dogs are the most popular, followed by cats. Mm-hmm. But I believe in I I could be wrong about this, but I believe in Asia and Europe, I think mm-hmm. cats are a little more popular. Mm-hmm. Do you know if that I could be wrong about that, but I find it so interesting. And a lot of it has to do with space. A lot of people like yeah. in Europe, yeah. live in smaller homes because yeah. the continent is so old. Yeah. Here in America, we sometimes people have larger yards so they can have dogs. Yeah. But yeah. I do think it's very interesting how the yeah. pet can, you know, is dominant in, in some yeah. regions of the world. Yes, definitely. Um, I think someone from the audience, let me see. Um, well, she, it's, I think it's May. Hi, May. Um, dogs and cats both. <laughs> so if we have a competition between dogs and cats, I guess it's very hard to, to say. It's probably and a they're tight. Both like pets. <laughs> yeah. They both have their strong points. You yeah. know, I love both. I have only dogs, but we do foster kittens during oh. um in, in the states i don't know if this is a global thing but here in america during the months of march mm-hmm. to october i believe mm-hmm. is what they call kitten season and that's because that's when like 90 percent or something a very large number of kittens yeah. are born yeah and so the big influx you need to get uh foster parents to mm-hmm. help take care of these kittens while they yeah. get adopted yeah and we do that every season and it's it's a lot, but we, I love both, both pets, even though we only have yeah. dogs. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Marilyn, hi. And that she's um, a dog person. She's dogs. <laughs> and I feel like sometimes when you get one, you want more. So I have seen uh, some of my best friend, they have more than one dog as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. And um, I think, um, I think Gregory, cats, amazing, but dogs are the best. <laughs> fast. Yeah, yeah. And I um because I have to travel this week and it's spring break. So my husband takes my kids, um, take care of the kids and, and dogs. Mm-hmm. Um they because the kids love to walk the dogs and my dogs usually don't walk that much. They're tiny. Um, so they're exhausted every night because the cats are home the kids are home all the time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like take it easy, kids. <laughs> right. You're wearing them out. Yes, that's right. So I see pictures of them so tired at night every day. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. 
so what's really great, we see people call, calling in from all kinds of places. Um, and May, thank you for leaving another comment. I have cats first and then dogs come to my life. I think I love dogs more at this time. That's that's super funny. Yes. Yeah, and, and we will have um, a supplier manufacturer coming in, pet star coming in um, around um, the second part of this event. Um, so about 25 minutes. So definitely come in. We'll have some pets ambassadors. Mm -hmm showing off will be really really fun so definitely stay tuned for the whole session yes uh, we're exciting for that yeah we're starting officially starting two minutes so hey let's see what are the comments we have from the audience and thank you so much for calling in from different parts of the world yes. wow, that's absolutely amazing i love to see that you know for alibaba.com we have buyers globally and we always mm -hmm. you know see a different language, different background, a different culture, especially me, I work with customers. So um, it's just amazing. People are coming in from all kinds of places. Um, so I think we have um, a few seconds before we officially start. Okay. So yeah, exciting. All right, let's, let's start. All right. March Expo, Alibaba.com's annual month-long promotional event that offers new products and services from new trends and insights, where you can explore new opportunities, lower costs, and source with certainty. Be the first to access new product launches and get a sneak peek into the latest breakthrough products via live streams from 40 standout suppliers across 10 key industries. Deep dive into over 200 leading innovation showcases and experience cutting edge production techniques through live streams and videos so you can bring your products to life via better and newer solutions. Hello and welcome to the Buyer Growth Academy March Expo Special Edition. And from Alibaba.com's Buyer Team, I'm your host, Ming Yang. And good to see you again. And some of the audience, I repeat, repeat audience, and welcome back. On um, March Expo, as we just seen the commercial, is our annual month long promotional events featuring millions of newly released products. And we offer 90 day lowest price guarantee and more features. So make sure you click the link in the comments to the main event page and definitely take advantage of everything we are offering right now. We have half a month to go, so don't miss it. Our March Expo series focuses on helping SMBs to be more competitive in 2023. And today we will dive into the pets industry. And we have two hour session today and we invite um, three pets business owners. So first hour we have Alexis with us and the second hour we have Cesar and Sam join us. So you will hear about their ex entrepreneur story, story and their industry trends and sourcing strategies. Also calling in today is our elite supplier partner, um, Pet Star, very soon. So um, please do leave your questions and comments in the session. We'll do Q and A throughout the event. And also at the end, we have some gifts prepared for you as well. So definitely leave your comments and questions. Um, and then first off, I couldn't be more delighted to introduce our first special guest, Alexis, the founder of Bohan Bark. Hi, Alexis, welcome. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. I really am honored to be here. I've never done anything like this, so this is exciting. Yeah, so we're we're very delighted to have you. Um, so you know, I have I've been following your Instagram and I've heard about your story. So yeah, so tell our audience about your story, your business and products. What kind of products do you sell? Sure. So, okay. So my business is Boho and Bark. I'm a pet goods store. I mainly sell accessories. We've been open for three, almost four years now, which is crazy to think about. And the types of products that I mainly sell are accessories. So things like bandanas and collars and leashes. Um, but recently I've started tiptoeing into other products as well. Uh, my best seller right now is a product called a lick mat which is kind of anti-anxiety focused. Um, and then I also hand make some products called Paw Balm, which is like lotion for your dog's paws. So 
I started just with bandanas and over the years I've expanded into other products. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and only for years, that's um, a lot of products line. That's awesome. So definitely tell us where you sell those products. So I'm going to order some for my pets. <laughs> You're too kind. So I started at the very beginning on Etsy. And I think that's what a lot of small businesses just starting out do. After a while, the business kind of grew. It took off a little bit. And I began selling on my personal website, bohoembark.com. And I still sell on there. That's my main um, selling site, I guess you could say. A couple of years ago, though, I expanded into wholesale. So now I sell to other retailers across the world. Some of my products are sold in France and in Germany and Belgium and in a lot of stores in the U.S. So that's been really exciting. And finally, this week, actually, in two days, I'm going to be opening my first retail store here in the United States. I am so excited to be expanding into brick and mortar. It's been my dream since I was a little girl to open and have my own store where people could come in and shop. Yeah. You know, I couldn't be more excited. Yeah. I'm very happy for you. And, you know, opening online store and offline store, they are very dip different experience. Yes. So where is your physical store? My store is in Georgia. That's where I live. That's where I'm based. And so it will be here. It's a very small town. And like you said, it's very different from my website, but mm -hmm. I'm excited to be trying this new venture. Um, yeah. But regardless, I'll still have my online website and I have a feeling that'll still be my main focus. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, all omni-channel, people talk about that all mm -hmm. the time, but um, actually the online offline works different experience. And um, unfortunately for small business um, in the past few years, they have been through a lot of challenges, right? So we'll definitely dive into that in a minute. Um, so um, in when we were chatting um, earlier, uh, we talked about your dogs and my dogs. Um, we talked about how to take care of them, how you kind of started to have dogs. Yes. So, um, so I think that's how you find your passion. Um, and then how your business build your business around your passion, right? Yes, exactly. So I got my first dog when I was 22. Her name's Willow. She's actually to the left of me here, if you can see her, my left at least. Um, and yeah, so I was 22. I had just gotten her and I fell in love. My first dog, I'd never had one. I'd never experienced like that kind of love from a pet. I'd had hamsters growing up and other small animals, but never a dog. And there's just something so different about dogs. But anyway, I got her and I went to start buying accessories for her. And I just realized that there weren't any accessories that I really loved at like my big box chain stores. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got a sewing machine and I got on YouTube and I looked up a tutorial and I learned how to sew and I started making accessories for her. And that's kind of where the passion stemmed from. And my friend said, well, I really like those bandanas you're making. Maybe you can make some for me. And I thought maybe other people would like this too. And, and the store kind of grew from there. But overall, my passion totally stemmed from Willow. And every new product that I bring to my store is inspired by her. Wow, that's that's such an amazing story. You know, a lot of um, times we hear about startups and, you know, I have seen some data saying 85% um, of the startups, they fail. Um, so I think uh, sometimes people, you know, they find the right products that sometimes they don't. But really, um, you know, from talking to you and also from some other experts as well, is, you know, the best secret recipe is find your passion and something you absolutely love and find the needs in the market and build a business around it. Right. Um, so I think that's really, really the best way to go. I totally agree. I think. Yeah. If you're not passionate about what you're selling and you're creating, mm -hmm. the business isn't going to flourish. I think mm -hmm. I, I don't think you'll have the drive to make it succeed if, if mm -hmm. you're not passionate about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to sell products that are dog based, which has turned into my entire life, my whole heart. Yeah. yeah. It really pushes me to succeed because mm -hmm. I want what's best for her. And so I, I make products that are best for her. Absolutely. Um, and also, you know, sometimes people want to start something on the side because mm -hmm. they're not sure they're just testing the market so it's you know the the term called solopreneurs and entrepreneurs yes. and kind of um 
you know, like a part-time effort, right? So you are a solopreneur, the one person you're running the show yourself. Everything that um, that go into your business, you kind of in charge of everything. So how does it work for you? Oh my god, like a lot. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it is a lot. So、um, exactly like you just said, my job started as a side hustle. Mm -hmm. um, it was on the side. I was working full time for a marketing company, and I got Willow, and and I told you my story. I started、mm -hmm. sewing bandanas, and over time, the business took off, and I was able to leave that job and solely、mm -hmm. focus on Boho and Bark. So Boho and Bark is now my full time job.、Mm -hmm. um, we talked about all of the different ways that I sell my products,、um, but. In terms of solopreneur and on all of that that it entails, at the beginning that entailed not only me getting the material to make the products, but also making the products, making the website, making all of the marketing to sell those products, the customer service, the Instagram posts. Uh, down the road, it's evolved, and so now I don't actually make the products myself anymore. That's where Alibaba.com came in, and that has helped me so much because now I can focus on every other area of the business.、Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of hats. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm very happy to hear、um, Alibaba.com support your business. Yes,、um, even you know very small part, and we're always happy to hear that. Um, and you know, for the startups, a lot of people like you, they want to start something, and、um, the the number one reason they don't they fail is they don't know how to choose the right products.、Yes. Maybe they have idea, you know, what kind of products they want to sell, but exactly, you know, how to design it,、um, what kind of pricing do you set up,、um, you know, how do you. Like choose exactly what color and what size, a lot of details going into that.、Yes. So, how did you choose?、Um, how do you choose your products? You're still launching new ones as well. So, how did you choose the new product ideas? So, every business owner is different, and every business owner goes about it, you know, in their、mm -hmm. particular way. But for me, I rely heavily on social media,、um, and what I mean by that, I'm sorry, my dog's trying to come up and say hi. Ooh, hi. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> what I mean by that is, I have an Instagram following of about fifty thousand. I, I think it's actually forty-seven thousand, but、mm -hmm. that number started at zero, and it doesn't matter how large or small that number is. When it, I had ten followers, when I had a hundred followers, I would get on Instagram and I would ask my followers, "I'm looking to make new products. What are you interested in?、Mm -hmm. What is something that would..." Change your life and make your life easier as a dog mom, and they would tell me like, "Well, I really like collars. I've never seen this type of collar in the store before, or a bandana, or whatever the product is." And then after I found a product that they were interested in, I would go on again and I'd ask, "Well, what kind of collars are you looking for? What size dog do you have?" And so I use social media to do market research, and I don't launch any product、mm -hmm. without. Really diving into my customers' needs first,、mm -hmm. specifically my customers. I think that's an awesome part of social media. You can directly talk to the people that buy from you.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely a good idea. And、um, you know, a lot of other people we have talked to, and they also have their customer base. So definitely finding、um, a group of customers and have a great conversation with them and give feedback. That's a really good way to start. Yes.、Um, and you talk about your social media Instagram accounts, and you're kind of an influencer on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know about that, but thank you. Yeah, forty-seven thousand Instagram followers, and we will share your link、um, in the comment later as well.、Um, so the content on your account looks really nice. How do you feel like being a influencer on social media? Oh gosh, again, <laughs> like, I don't even think of myself as one, but、yeah. um, it's fun. I I, I say、mm -hmm. all the time to my fiance, my favorite part. Of running the business, other than the dogs, is being able to interact with my community, and I really love Instagram for that reason. Being able to personally like message and respond to comments of my customers,、um, that aspect, the influencing part, is one of my favorites. Yeah, absolutely.、Um, so, did you set up your social media first and became popular first? 
um, or did you start your business idea first? So, cause it, they're kind of like supporting each other, right? Yes. And which yes. one did you start first? I started them almost at the same time. So okay. I got, like I said, I got that sewing machine and I learned how to sew. And maybe just like a week after that, wow. I was like, well, my friends seem to be into this. Mm -hmm. So I made my Instagram account, Boho and Bark. It's been the same ever since I started. And um, I started following some like dogs that I saw on Instagram and they followed me back. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's a big part of Instagram, like the, the dog mm -hmm. influencer world. Like lots of mm -hmm. dogs have their own Instagram accounts, like Willow the Corgi, for example. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I kind of started them both at the same time and the business grew with the Instagram. And, and like you said, they both feed off of each other. So without mm -hmm. my social following, I don't think Boho and Bark would have ever grown to what it is now. Mm -hmm. um, I really relied on social media to propel my business. That sounds great. And for our audience, if you want to start a business or if you want to start a social media, you know, just go and start. Right. So, yes. you know, it, you don't become an influencer or get 50,000 followers overnight. Just mm -hmm. take time and build up something authentic, organic and helpful. And you eventually will grow. Just diving into the business, start something. You just got to start. I, exactly. What my Instagram looks like now is very different than what it looked like four years ago when I started, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I think people followed me because they were interested in my story and what I was trying to achieve with the business. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I think a big part of it's just being authentic. Instagram mm -hmm. has an awesome feature where you can make stories mm -hmm. and you can talk to the camera. And I think that's what people really resonate with when they follow my account mm -hmm. is being able to see the person behind the business, you know, like for example, I don't know the person that owns Target. I always use this as an example. I'm sure they're a great person, but I don't know who they are. But all of my followers know who owns Boho and Bark. They know Lexi and they even know my fiance and my dog's names. Like they, they know who I am. And I think just getting on social media and telling your story mm -hmm. is what it's what people really connect with. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like maybe in the past industry, it's so more um, like a family, it's more connected and yes. people love their pets, right? So yes. I think that's a really good industry to be in. Um, so in addition to, um, you know, finding the right products and talking to your customers, uh, what other steps do you think are important when you launch a new product and bring to the market? Mm -hmm. So many things. So uh, first, like like we've already talked about, I do market research. So mm -hmm. I don't even look into a product before I know that my customers are going to be interested in it. Um, and then in other things that I like to achieve when, before I launch a product is I like to make sure that I get really good pictures of the product. Mm -hmm. You know, what you present online is going to decide if somebody wants to add that to their cart or not. Mm -hmm. And so I like to do um, very good, clean photo shoots, and I like to make lots of advertising material. And again, like what we've talked about, a lot of solopreneurs, they start all of this by themselves. You don't have to have a photographer or a really nice camera. When I started, I was taking all of the pictures with my phone. And for the most part, I still am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you just have to get creative. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to make sure that that online presence is really good. So you do have to have the marketing material and the pictures. Mm -hmm. um, if you just take, you know, uh, just a, a random picture, like on your kitchen table of something and you throw it up on your website, people might not want to buy that. It does need to be staged and mm -hmm. edited. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, pictures worth a thousand words, right? A thousand <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, so you, you you use Alibaba. You mentioned earlier Alibaba.com. Yes. So how did you find um, Alibaba.com? So I feel like this is a basic answer, but oh, I was just looking for manufacturers mm -hmm. and suppliers um, online, and I stumbled across Alibaba.com on Google, and I was a little apprehensive at first because – you know, you don't necessarily get to meet the suppliers and the manufacturers in person. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that kind of, I think that scared me a little. And I think that scares a lot of first time purchasers, but the, the process and is so seamless, you know, the fact that you are, you're able to get samples. And a lot of times, a lot of the suppliers call you on the phone or they FaceTime you. It, it really put a lot of my worries to side. And so I found them on Google. I started talking to suppliers, a bunch of different ones. And a lot of that's evolved over the last couple of years, but I would not be able to run my business now without it. Wow. That's good to know. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, a lot of the people, when they start, they have the fear of, you know, using getting started with it um, because, Usually when you meet with a supplier in person, you kind of look at their products, you go to trade shows, right? You can touch it and feel it. Um, but when you are looking for a supplier online, you can't really see them in person. There's some kind of, um, you know, you, you're not used to it. Um, so we totally understand that as well. So uh, we're adding new features like virtual showroom or like a, vir like a video calls or live streaming. So you know, the buyers can really see mm -hmm. the supplier in person. You talk to them, you negotiate, you, you know, ask things you really matter to you. So we want to make it, you know, better experience for the buyers. So any, you know, for the audience, if you have any um, recommendations or you want to share your story, or if you need any help, feel free to leave a comment and we'll help you with that. We'll answer your questions as well. Um, so, so back to our, um, focus today, we, you know, your story is absolutely helpful for SMBs in the industry and even the people who are not in this industry. Um, so, you know, you, you build a real business from just launching products to actually owning and growing business. That's actually transition. So let's talk about, you know, building a competitive business and the sustainable business in past industry. Um, you know, we, Alibaba.com has just launched a report, white paper report, um, mm -hmm. 2023 sourcing strategies for SMBs. And that shows the pet industry is continuing to grow it's continuing to grow yeah. in spite of all the, you know, external um, recession kind of concerns it's because I rocketed. Yeah. So, you know, pets industry is essential to the consumers, like baby products, yes. you know, um, you know, even fashion apparel for adults, they're not essential, but pets industry, it's essential. Yes. Um, I, and I totally understand that. Um so I wouldn't just go for the cheapest products for my pets. I want the right product, the high quality supplies, right? So would you agree with that? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Um, it's amazing to me how quickly and how well the pet industry continues to grow despite all of the factors that have thrown at it. I mean, with talks of like a recession happening or even the pandemic happening a couple of years ago, I... When I went full time, it was at the beginning of 2020, right before COVID. And I remember telling my uh, my fiance at the time, I'm so scared. Like, I, I don't know with all of this happening, people losing their jobs. I don't know if people are still going to be buying pet goods. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem like a priority. And it was the exact opposite. I mean, Pet goods just took off during COVID. Everybody got dogs and maybe they weren't buying clothes for themselves, but they were buying clothes for their dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to go off your point, ex yes, absolutely. Like we have found out that pet accessories and pet goods in general are a necessity. Um, and so I totally agree with that. <laughs> um, and um, But, you know, for the um, recession conversations, right, we have been hearing that since last year and with the inflation and um there is uh, in general there is a decrease in consumer spending and you know interest in interest rate increase um so plus the recent incident in banking mm -hmm. um so have you seen any challenges in this industry um i'm sure there are some challenges um so so have you seen any challenges to your business or pe or the business you know Sure. There, I mean, there are challenges, even though people love their pets, it isn't a bulletproof industry. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, a, a slower economy is going to affect it. And so I will say this past year, 
was a little slower for me than previous years. And after talking with a lot of fellow small business owners that I personally know, they said the same things. So regardless of the industry, you know, it did take a little bit of a hit. That's just kind of the name of the game. You know, I think that's something that you prepare for Mm -hmm. uh, when you decide to be a small business owner. Mm -hmm. But regardless, pets are still one of those things, like we still talked about, that you're willing to spend money on. So maybe you aren't going out and going shopping for yourself, but Mm -hmm. you're probably picking up something for your baby and you're definitely picking up something for your fur baby. For sure. So even though it's, it was maybe a slower year. I did still see an increase in new customers, Mm -hmm. which was great. Maybe people weren't making as many return buys as they were. They were still making return purchases, Mm -hmm. but maybe they couldn't buy as many bandanas as they did the last year. Mm -hmm. I did still see more customers last year than the year before Mm -hmm. because more people are still continuing to get dogs, especially with all of this that's going on. Pets are very comforting. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yep. people are opening up their families to them. Yeah, definitely. And I think another thing is um, uh, people are, are going to look for high quality products yes. and they're going, to, they're not going to just waste a lot of money on the things that just usually, you know, they don't focus too much, right? They want to buy something that's more um, um, just really good and they're with really good designs or like use special materials and you know later on we'll talk about the trends as well um so i think maybe we'll choose more carefully and your products you have a really good design and you get feedback from your customers so you're ex- look you're ex- offering exactly what they're looking for mm-hmm. so things like yours will continue to grow um because that's exactly what they're looking for Mm-hmm. hopefully that's, yeah. that's that's the goal yeah so just um you know i'm always curious in the pets industry is it's really competitive is this like a cutthroat type of industry yes so when i started i went full-time in 2020 but i started the business in 2019 and i remember being one of the few um small business accessory stores but mm-hmm. with the pandemic and the influx of people getting dogs the industry blew up and there are so many pet stores now, Mm -hmm. um, small businesses. So I would call it very cutthroat, but there are still ways to stand out and be unique. Um, You just have to really dive into your niche. Yeah, for sure. Um, And then I think that's um, your way to really stand out. Um, And um, how important it is for the cost of high quality products to your business? Is that like a critical? I would say it's one of the most important things because if your cost is too high, initially customers are probably going to pass you up. They might not go to the cheapest option, but they also might not want to pay for the most expensive option. People are usually trying to stay somewhere in the middle. Um, And on top of that, quality if if they buy a collar and it falls apart within the first week, they're going to try to return that to you. So that's going to be a loss of revenue for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and on top of that, they're not going to be a repeat buyer. And that's more important than attracting new buyers. Keeping mm-hmm. that customer retention is critical. So my products have to be a good price and they have to be of gr- excellent quality. Yeah, that's for sure. So yeah, that's, you know, we had a really great conversation about your business to stay competitive and, you know, facing challenges. Mm-hmm. So now we're getting to our next session. Um, and we're super excited to bring on the stage a uh, manufacturer, Pet Star, um, and also known as Tian Yuan Pets Company. They are a elite partner on Alibaba.com. And I think join it as um, is Johan, our guest host, who's in the showroom. That's really interesting. Um, and also Clement, right? So hi, Johan. Uh, Johan, welcome. It's really late your time. Yeah, it is indeed. Uh, thank you so much, Min, and, th- and thank you so much, Alexis, for that. And then, uh, yeah, this is Johan, and I'm talking to you guys from our company, Tian Yuan's showroom. It's their campus that we're on today. And I am with our partner today, uh, Clement from Tian Yuan Company. Hello, this is Clement. I'm the elite sales manager from Tian Yuan Pet Products. 
Cockdom Limited, and uh, on the behalf of the past star, it is really my honor to be here and have the perspective in the pet industry. Now, guys, uh, for all the audience that are watching, please make sure to search the keyword elite in the Alibaba.com app or the website to make sure to get that elite partner event the discount. And it is a, a massive brand promotion event on Alibaba.com that introduces the industry top 100 brands offering the best of the year with 50% off, as you guys can see. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. I know you guys bring right, a lot so. of interesting um, stuff to this event and also offers as well. We'll definitely um, go through them. Um, so tell us about the business and you know what is so special with your strengths in the pets market. All right. I think Lemon has that answer for you. <laughs> so um, this is our showroom and this is where our story begins. And firstly, our pasta has been established in this pet industry in 1998. That means we have been in this pet industry for over 20 years. And we, uh, with the mission of making the pets healthier and focusing on the continuous developing of the virus products and uh, around the theme of, theme of the living habits of the main pets like uh, cats and uh, dogs mm -hmm. and to um, make them live easier like what we human beings like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Like they want a humanization and their biggest strength of TNUN as a company and as an economic perspective is the fact that they have that supply chain integration capabilities and that huge product diversity. It makes it in, everything so much easier that it's a one-stop shop solution. And, and in the case of Alexis wanting somebody to be assisting you with the whole uh, production and customization and everything in that regard, this is the excellent solution that Tenuan offers, whether it's the pet beds, cushions, houses, cat scratchers, posts, you name it. You, they got it and they can customize it and one-stop shop solution just for you. Wow. Yes, because we hope that every client that uh, to contact us could be uh, could get the high quality products immediately, and they don't need to find the other suppliers to you know do more stuff to finish this process. And of course, we want to build a very long term cooperation with our clients, and uh, um, we will be your best choice to finish your whole range purchase purchasing in the. Pass ranch, I think. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, uh, Alexis, what do you think? Have you seen a live streaming from supplier before? No, this <laughs> is very cool. I love being able to see directly into the mm -hmm. showroom. Mm -hmm. And they have a really cool showroom. They have multiple floors. And as you see, they have products for dogs and cats as well. And it's really interesting. I can't wait to see more. So, it's a beautiful um, showroom. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, so since we have... Um, Alexis, who is just really familiar with the market um, on the buyer side. And we have Tingyuan, Pai Star as, um, as the industry leading supplier um, from China. So let's chat about some trends in this industry. I'd love to hear both of your perspectives. So Alexis, um, so what kind of trends, product trends do you see in the pet industry? So for me, I see two big trends, and one of which I believe they just mentioned was humanization. So really humanizing our pets and making them part of the family, because I, I think there's been a shift, mm -hmm. especially our dogs and cats. They're, they're no longer pets. Like I just said, they are one of the family. And so, and so we're bringing in accessories and different types of products that make them more a part of the family unit. And then another trend that I'm seeing is anti-anxiety products, mm -hmm. especially with COVID happening and a lot of pet owners now going back into the office as opposed to what they were before really staying at home, a lot of dogs have become very anxious. And mm -hmm. so we really see this trend happening where bringing products to help with that anxiety is really important. Yeah. So, um, Johan, do you guys have the same, uh, see the same trends as well? 
Well, from my personal perspective, I have a dog and a cat, and I can definitely agree with everything Alexis just said. My dog is super needy. My cat gets super anxious. But regardless of that, we also can see that from the perspective of economic perspective and the statistics that we've gathered and the research that we've done. Uh, just a couple of stats for you guys. Americans have spent... 123 billion on their pets in 2021, mm -hmm. and that's up 13% over the previous year. Uh, over 114 million US households own a dog or a cat. And of course, there's 32% of millennials and 14% of Gen Z owning pets or spending on pets is expected to show the continued growth for many years. So as you guys can see, it's not the older boomers that is actually spending, it's the newer up and coming generation. So there's yeah. definitely projection for a lot of growth in the area. And from the stats, it's concluded that the growing number, of course, of, uh, this is based on Americans, I uh, think that their dog is a cat of... Uh, dog or cat, sorry, as a member of the family instead of a pet, mm -hmm. like Alexis mentioned before. Isn't that mm -hmm. right, Clement? Yeah, you know what? We are moving from the stage where people like treating their uh, pets as a property to a new stage that people will um, regard their pets as a household and part of the families. And um, people are tending to give their um, more better care and uh, like what a human being mm. uh, enjoy. So as a one of the leading pet products company, um, we pets are always keep that pace ahead of the trend, I think. Yeah. And uh, That's very also, uh, you know, we have a lot of adopted pets in our company. You have seen that yeah. today. And they're all adopted. It used to be a street pass. But now they got new home and being connected with us very so well. And with this kind of you know warm experience, I think we can have a a deep understanding in this pet industry. What do you think? I definitely agree. And like uh, like Lemon mentioned, we they got a couple of strays around that have become the pet ambassadors. I've actually played all day with them. They're just the friendliest of guys. Actually, we've got one right here. Her name is uh, Strawberry. Hold up. Oh my hello, goodness. Strawberry, there you go. We'll and hello. if you're talking about uh, humanization, I think this is what Tianyuan actually has been specializing in. Oh, there you go. Uh, I think Tianyuan has done a great job in that way. And the fact that they have did this anti-depression series, especially the Cat Tree series right here behind us, they have over a hundred different styles on them. And the new Cat Tree trainer are definitely being told up all the time. Isn't that right, Clement? Yep. For example, those are all the cactus theme uh, trees. It is very popular among the European and USA markets. So, uh, and also we have some, you can take a closer screen with that. The, wow. go there you can yeah, see actually like strawberry it. in there. Uh, is she your CEO, right? Chief Experience Officer. <laughs> Chief Experience Officer. <laughs> right. <Indeed. That's> the, <laughs> so cute. And wow. uh, we you also know, have some yeah. high cactus. Please, please take a yeah. pic. Yeah, oh, over here, right? Yeah. You know, I Alexis, so, you know, um, when you talk to a supplier like like Pastar, right, like Tingyuan, and they actually share with you the market trends data and consumer data, and also they will have you seen their CEOs um, using the product. Was that is that amazing? <laughs> amazing, and and as a solopreneur. I know as a small business, it can be very scary to venture into something new like this. And so to hear the statistics and see the products being used, it, it really calms a lot of fears that I think a lot of small business owners have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. You know, sometimes our suppliers, they actually give a lot of really good advice to mm -hmm. our buyers about the trends, you know, recommendations, um, the choice of the products. So I think, you know, I've absolutely love to hear those stories. Um, so that's a really good trend. I think, you know, for the anxiety, um, I wish there is something similar for humans. Well, um, but that's Me too. Really <laughs> right. Um, so, so I think there are other trends as well. So Alexis, do you see any other trends um, in the industry as well? Yeah, another big trend that I see in the industry are a lot of people wanting to move into the direction of eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's something that's become very important. They want products that use less plastic. They want their packaging to mm -hmm. use a lot of less plastic, and they want the products to be made um, 
in just more eco-friendly ways, like consuming less industry or using less water, for example. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah. So you know, I have heard something similar um, in other industries as well. Um, I think there are some states. I mean, don't quote me. It's just something I have learned. Um, but you know, we should find some more data as well. I think um, some states like New York and California, they are going to um, regulations allow for around. Wow, I hear some. <laughs> That's super fun. You know, working in that space is like a dream come to. I like to have to go and visit them. Um, sometimes, yeah, that's awesome. And, and you know, they have like a stairs and in their showroom, they need like a roller skate something to rolling around. They it's do. Awesome. That's awesome. It's so um, big. So we're just working in the office in front of a computer they right around that all the time. That's like a dream job for me. Um, you know, I have heard that too, though, that, that some states are really starting mm -hmm. to crack down on the guidelines mm -hmm. for a lot of products in terms of eco friendliness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think this is something I definitely recommend our audience to pay more attention to. Mm -hmm. um, and as suppliers, um, you know, if you want to learn more, definitely check out uh, Pet Star Tianyuan's page and, and they just send a message to them, ask them about more details. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, well, that's a really long walk to very long walk <laughs> you know this is really interesting um like i've seen a lot of showrooms but this is like the first time this is such a big room um if next time if i go travel i definitely want, want to check it out well. you have to yeah. you have to go see this how could yeah. you not yeah i know so i think they are um getting to a, a new place so um so johan what do you guys think about um, sustainability and, you know, eco-friendly kind of products and materials as well. Right. In that regard, I think Clement is more equipped to answer that question for you since she is the representative of the manufacturer themselves. So Clement, what do you think? Well, sus uh, sustainable uh, is actually leading the, or the pet industry to transform. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our perspective, we think uh, the pet ownership as a consumer, and they also hope that uh, what the brands and the products they bought was made by the um, environmentally friendly mm -hmm. and uh, also the ethic made. So, and also in the uh, layer of the supply chain, we saw that uh, the echo series, mm, the selling date is gross, keep a very big growth. And so we, uh, as a manufacturer, we also uh, meet their requirements in different dimensions. So, and uh, also a very uh, important trend is what, uh, whether the pet food and the pet uh, toys and the bedding accessories, like mm -hmm. we're all um, following the concept of the reusable, recycle and the upcycle, whatever, mm -hmm. but... Yes. A lot of manufacturing just did this kind of concept, mm -hmm. just based on a concept. So, mm -hmm. But as a, a, um, a lot of experience in manufacturing, we did it in the real and bring yeah. it in the physical and uh, do the real echo life in the, our products itself. Exactly. Like, yeah? like uh, Clement mentioned, a lot of manufacturers just had the concept and actually our manufacturer brought it to a real product. But the most exciting thing to talk about to you guys is not just the trend, is the fact that they actually launched the brand. As you guys mm -hmm. notice behind me, there's a brand called Echo Life that mm -hmm. is actually made of all these products that, uh, that Lemon described to you guys, made of recycled plastic from uh, plastic bottles to reduce ocean pollution. Mm -hmm. And you can just see there's a variety of things here, but we're going to get into one of them a little bit more in detail in this one down below, right? Yeah. So like, uh, like I said, there's a, a bunch of things that have been uh, developed for this, and this is just one of them. Uh, let me give you guys a little bit of an idea. I'm going to put this down so you guys can get a better idea of what this looks like. On the inside is actually a recycled bottle. My now, dogs I don't know them. if Alexis can agree or I mean you can agree, but my yeah. little French bulldog, I can buy her the most expensive gifts, but this is the best toy. She can just chew on this forever. So the fact that you can just replace the inside with your recycled bottle that's a new toy oh, every day. Oh, oh my goodness. You know, that's just, a, 
you know, how do you think about that idea? That's just so interesting. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and you have bottles yeah. all the time, right? Yeah. So you just replace that. They never seem to run out, do they? Yeah. But there's that's just one of many. Like we see over here, you will see the whole Echo Life series. These are a couple of ropes over here. There's a couple of other toys and things. But uh, what did we? Let's look at another toy instead. Mm -hmm. What do you think? As a toy recommendation? Yeah. Mm, How about well, that star over there? What is that? Uh, this one over yes, here. Yes, this one is good. Yeah. It could have a interactive and between the human being and your past and your dog person I think you got a more experience than me. I think, uh, I think these are very fancy. I think my dog would absolutely love them. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I noticed is the actual procedure here. Is that correct? Like you guys take actual plastic bottles and taking it down procedure to procedure. As you guys will see, there's a bunch of bottles up here and uh, they oh. actually have the procedure broken down here. I don't know if it's going to pop up on your screens, but feel free to check that out. You guys can actually yeah. see there's a bunch of cool toys like these are just a, a few of them but the materials all are very sustainable and yes. all of them are made of recycled materials is just awesome i just think yeah. making a difference in today's environment nowadays is yeah. just uh it's just a key a key feature of any business to have you should have a situation where you're making a difference but yeah. just another one is the little mat now this is a little pillow for your dog to sleep on and I don't know if you guys have experience, but especially when I was training my little French bulldog, she used to make a couple of accidents. And uh, you don't want to throw away the pillow or wash it every time. Why not have it waterproof? Now, please, Clement, do not hit me in the face. <laughs> so I'm going to pour the water. Very hot. Go. Hey. <laughs> As you guys can see, yeah. I'm going to bring it up close. You will actually be able to see the beads still on here. Come on closer. You'll be able to see the beads of water still on there. So if I actually take this, you can That's see the water great. on my hand. Can you make that to a couch or like <laughs> you know, any wine that. spills, right, Min? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. That's great. Yeah. yeah, this is just definitely for early puppy training. I think. Is there any better product than this? No. Oh my gosh, no. Yeah. So as you guys can see, there's a bunch of cool products that they've made with this, but. Uh, there's much more to see, and this manufacturer has just done such a great job in developing things and actually making a difference in today's yeah. climate. As you guys know, our environment is just degrading and degrading, but by developing these products, it's just a, a, an effort from their side. And, and like, like uh, Clement mm -hmm. mentioned before, they didn't just take a concept, they actually delivered a product, which is amazing. Yeah, Love absolutely. That. Yeah, can you guys do us a favor just zoom me into that on um, the wall that shows the process oh this over yeah, here I'd love to see that, that yeah that just looks great that's just the process of their ma the making the products is also eco-friendly as well um you that's know right. i know we don't have you know the um the time to show all the details but um definitely we would drop the link to the manufacturer in the comment and check out their page if you have any questions about specific process or product just contact them through the chatting they will share with you as much details as you want um alexis what do you think it's just amazing I think it's amazing. What I really like to say is that all of this sustainability, you know, this movement that's happening, mm -hmm. I like to call it one less carbon paw print. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. Yep. Yeah. And and I think know, this really adds to that. I mean, I, a lot <laughs> of pet parents care about the footprints that they're leaving, the paw prints that their dogs are leaving. And so I think this is amazing. Yeah, you know, I agree. You you brought it up, and I have a feeling there's a high kind of connection or correlation mm -hmm. between the pets owners and eco friendly supporters, like or like people who care more about this absolutely concept. Um, so I think that's really interesting. Um, so that's a really good trends you guys talk about and share, and it's really helpful for our audience as well. Um, I think. Since we have the supplier and, and also Alexis, our buyers as well, let's talk about kind of how can we help people understand the communication between suppliers and buyers. So Alexis, when you do sourcing, so when you look for suppliers, how do you find the right supplier partners? Like what's right for you? Sure. So when I begin to look for suppliers, there's a couple 
of different criteria I look for. One of them being, will the manufacturer send me a sample so that I can test the product out before I, I purchase a large quantity of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. The sampling is very important. Yes. Um, yeah. And what other standards and criteria do you use to choose suppliers? Sure. So I also look for any certifications mm -hmm. that the supplier has. I really like to see how long they've been in business. Um, obviously, a, a, an older established company makes me feel a little more confident in them than maybe someone that's newer. Um, Alibaba.com also offers trade assurance. And so I really like mm -hmm. to look for suppliers who offer that as well. Um, all of those things just help me feel a little more confident in purchasing from someone that maybe I don't have the opportunity to meet in person. But all of those things combined, they give me the confidence to place the order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I, f I have a feeling like Pakistan might be a really good choice. So, yeah. you know, for you, because what you're looking for. So, um, Johan, what do you guys um, think? Sure, I can I can assist you with this, but uh, before we get into that, I recommend we should probably check out our elite partner event on Alibaba.com due to the fact that all of your hey, okay, <laughs> are you okay, buddy? Are those sneezes? Oh, that's that's a, uh, <laughs> oh, poor little girl. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. It's a big right. So, uh, does it get back? <laughs> it's just a little couple of sneezes. Uh, getting back to what I was saying is like today is part of the uh, elite partner event on Alibaba.com due to the fact that it is they have been chosen. They have not applied and won. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> right. So a couple of things I want to just point out to, to everybody. Feel free to type in elite on your Alibaba.com app or uh, website, whatever you're going to do. But like I said, I already typed it there. So you just say search and I will actually take you directly to... The, the interface itself. And from here, you can scroll down through all the manufacturers that have been chosen, but actually the one you want to check out is this very friendly face over here, our pet star interface. And here you can see a couple of things, but just click on that and that will take you directly to their interface. And from here, if you have any questions or any mm -hmm. problems or any inquiries that you might have might, uh, encounter, you'll be able to get in touch directly with the manufacturer. You will also be able to do a little bit of a virtual, uh, there you go, there you go. You can do a virtual tour over here. You can see as a VR showroom and just this beautiful facility that you guys saw a second ago from us, mm -hmm. you can go and tour through yourself, by yourself on your interface. Just uh, scroll down, tap down there. It's okay. got a nice 3D element to it. Yeah. And again, when you see a manufacturer investing this much into their showrooms, not only the showroom, the physical showroom, but actually the VR showroom too, just shows you that they actually care about their services that they offer as well as their products that they deliver. Mm -hmm. But regardless of that, I'm going to get back to why you want to work with TNUN specifically. Mm -hmm. And one of them is what Alexi also mentioned was customization, right, Clement? What do you offer in terms of customization? For the customization, you know, clients have a lot of inspiration, a lot of thoughts, a lot of sparkling. So our mm, designer team, which over eight person, will support the uh, sparkling and uh, inspiration to rail. And also we have a very strong printing, printing room, which will also over 50 persons Fantastic. to support your um sparkling thoughts i think yeah yeah like she said 80 people in the r d department just to assist you with customization yeah lexi also mentioned uh, certification and certification mm -hmm. is a key part of tnun right isn't that yeah. right limit yes um as a very long experience in manufacturing we have a lot of company audits uh for some for example some normal one um ISO 9001 yeah. and uh, BSCI um, and some FDA, FSC, mm -hmm. all the certification, we got that. And uh, not just for the factory audits, we have a lot of uh, mm, testing certificates. Mm -hmm. For example, we do 
uh, rose testing for our mm. electronic items and uh, some GRS certification for our Echo Life products, you know. So it uh, depends on what the customer like. Of course, of That's course. Awesome. And you guys will see all, a lot of these things in the videos later. Just make sure to stay tuned. you get a better idea of the manufacturer too. But again, another key factor that TNUN offers is the after-sales services, right, Clement? Mm -hmm. uh, for the after-sale, we have a lot of office, uh, like in USA, UK, and Germany, and uh, Japan, and uh, a China, Hong Kong, to provide uh, some local service. Mm. So you don't have to really worry about after-sale. We got a lot of workers all over the Fantastic. world. Fantastic. Yeah. And also another one is the supply range. This manufacturer has such a huge range of, of products. And again, this assist allows you to uh, essentially branch out to, in, into new products. And Lexi mentioned she started with bandanas. And I don't know how many other things like the lick pad that you mentioned before. But again, if you go to manufacturer, they got such a variety of products and so much experience in doing that. Mm -hmm. You guys got how many products? Uh, I guess over 30,000 items, oh my God. not wow. including some ser uh, same series. So we got different items, different range, and uh, from accessories, toys, bedding trays, and uh, leashes, whatever. I think we could finish the one stop purchasing range. Fantastic. Yep. Min, I hope that definitely answered your question in regarding what Lexi's needs might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I think we. This is amazing, and I feel like we're we're in the real showroom, having face to face conversations. But we're definitely um, getting to the bottom of this hour. So um, I think we may actually have to go to the um, question section, Q and A section. Um, sure. Before heading to Q and A section, um, Alexis, does this products, are those products interesting to you? Are you going to up to them after this event oh my gosh yes i especially over thirty thousand products i mean right now i think i work with seven different suppliers it would be very convenient to be able to get all of my items from one place yeah absolutely and they can make products to your designs wow that's amazing yes that's very important for me all right so now let's get to the Q and A section. Um, so, because of the time, we'll pick up four questions, um, and then you know, we will actually prepare some you know small surprise and gift for for you. Um, so, if your questions get picked, um, and then let's um, get to the questions. Oh, this is the first question from our uh, May, which who has already talked to us a few times. Hi, May. Um, so they want to know the MOQs of your products. Guess you have a lot of products. Maybe it depends. Yeah, it depends on the different type of the products. For example, the cat trees and the beddings, we can provide a small MOQ, like 300 per item. It's okay. But um, for some small items, for example, the small toys and the delicious, Mm -hmm. mm, and the accessories like the cat uh, litter, cat litter, tray, um, the lowest MOQ would be like a thousand four hundred and forty pieces. It's easy to get. Okay, sounds good. And I would definitely recommend um, just chatting with um, the supplier, you know, through the chatting function, and reach out to them if you have a specific idea what you're looking for or mm -hmm. product you want to to purchase and you talk with them, you know, um, maybe they will give you a special deal today, right? And then, you know, you never know, definitely reach out to the supplier. That's a really good question. Um, I think next one is um, John, Mark. Hi, John. I want to know the trend products. So I think that's something people always asking, how do you find the trending products? So I think Alexa, maybe you can help um, and this question first, and then we'll have um, Pat Star answer as well. So we talked about this earlier. My best-selling products at the moment are the anti-anxiety mm -hmm. uh, products, which for me is the lick mask. That's mm -hmm. been a best seller for me right now. And mm -hmm. I believe Pet Star sells something like that, correct? Yep. Yeah. Um, 
the the point that we regarding like uh, best selling is like as a supply like we can see all the selling dates just like a background of all the sellers and the retailers in the world that's mm -hmm. right yeah. uh, to add on to what lemon said i think for anybody who is launching their business and alexis maybe can add on to that if you're actually in this industry, you're maybe following a couple of social media tags or something of the sort. So you actually can see what's happening in the market too. But being connected to a manufacturer of this mm -hmm. regard, they will actually be able to give you this type of information too because of the fact that they are aware of what's happening mm -hmm. elsewhere. Yeah, that's a good answer. Um, love awesome. that. Yeah. So we have um, an audience, Michelle R., and Michelle, I know you. You're here every every time. Thank you so much for um, joining us again. Um, she said, "Thanks for this live. What are your most preferred pads, material, and fabric used?" I think that's a good question for both Alexis and also for Petstar. Right. I well, I, I will just uh, share before Clement jumps into it. But if you walk through the showroom itself. They got such a variety of materials, mm -hmm. but of mm -hmm. course there's hot sellers and Clement can, can share on that, but you can pretty much customize it with whatever you want to cover it with. Mm -hmm. So Alexis, what about, what about you? What kind of material fabric do you prefer? So it depends on the product, but for example, my bandanas, I like to use cotton because it's very soft. Mm -hmm. So if the dog is just lounging around, it won't bother them. And if they rub up against their owners, it's soft for their owners. Um, but with other types of products, like some collars, for example, a lot of uh, my dog buyers, a lot of them prefer waterproof types of materials like PVC collars mm -hmm. um, because they, in the summer, they like to take their dog swimming or over to lakes. So mm -hmm. those are some of the best selling products that I have in my store, uh, materials. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, so I think, um, oh, wow. John asked another question. I want to know the winning and best products for this month and next month. You know, that's such a good question. And I, it's like a million dollar question. So, it John, is. yeah, I would recommend just checking out the March Expo page mm -hmm. or drop again in the comments. So we are uh, we are showing millions of newly released products and also trending product lists on the March Expo page. Definitely check it out. Mm -hmm. Then let's get to the last comment. Um, thanks, John. CJ, Golden Home. Look forward to checking out the Pestar products. Awesome. Everybody, just check out the link in the comments. You can reach out to Pestar directly um, and ask any questions you have for the time being. We may have to really move on to the next session because we have another speaker coming up. Um, and then Tian Yuan Pastar will actually take a break and they will come back in about 20, 25 minutes um, and they will show a bigger tour. Um, so it's very interesting. So stay with us and for a fun campus tour. And also we'll see our CEOs again. And thank you, Alexis. Um, you know, it has been absolute pressure talking to you and learning from you. So I always ask our speaker to give like a final advice to the SMBs. Um, oh, so goodness. Your last <laughs> advice to the small business owners, especially in the pest industry. My final advice would be for people who maybe haven't started yet that are interested in becoming a small business, just go for it. It's going to be scary. But if I can start on the floor of my bedroom, literally, I was literally cutting fabric on my bedroom floor and I was sewing on my nightstand. If I can start that way and, and grow a business that sells in five different continents in every state, uh, and is opening a brick and mortar, then literally anybody can do it because I didn't even know how to sew. And here wow. we are. Yep, yeah, here we are. Um, thank you so much, um, Alexis. This has been absolute pressure. Hopefully we'll have you back again. So our audience want to know how to follow you on um, Instagram. What's yes, so I am on Instagram and my handle is boho and bark b-o-h-o-a-n-d-b-a-r-k and i would love for you to join me over there i get on almost every day so you'll get to see a lot of this face 
uh, excellent. Um, I would also drop the link in the comment as well, so you can definitely check out Alexis' page. Well, thank you, Alexis. Um, thank you for joining us, and um, and um, let's go take it for a thirty seconds commercial. I will be right back. Bye, guys. March Expo, Alibaba.com's annual month-long promotional event that offers new products and services from new trends and insights, where you can explore new opportunities, lower costs, and source with certainty. Be the first to access new product launches and get a sneak peek into the latest breakthrough products via live streams from 40 standout suppliers across 10 key industries. Deep dive into over 200 leading innovation showcases and experience cutting-edge production techniques through live streams and videos so you can bring your products to life via better and newer solutions. Well, welcome back to the BioGirls Academy March Expo Special Edition. Um, from Alibaba.com. This is Ming Yang, and I'm your host. And today we have a two hour session. And um, if you have been with us for the last hour, we had a guest speaker, Alexis. Now I wanted to wel welcome our um, speakers from, uh, it's from Wigan, Cesar and Sam. Hi, Cesar, Sam. Hello, how are you? Hello. So, well, you know, you guys are the winner of our grants program, Alibaba.com school programs last year. So tell us about your um, products and business. Um, so, yeah, so we started uh, Wagon, uh, which is a company that focuses on creating innovative um, products that promote exploring. Um, so what we want to do is create products that uh, allow pet owners to be able to easily and conveniently um, I commute around the city with their pet. Wow, that's awesome. So, so um, how was the experience kind of, um, well, let me rephrase that. How did you hear about the grants program and how did you join it? So we actually heard the, um, about the Alibaba.com manifest grant through um, Hello Alice, uh, mm -hmm. which is a platform for small businesses to, uh, with a bunch of different tips and, and funding um, opportunities. Uh, we found it through there. We read through the description and felt that, you know, we, our company, as early as we are, actually fits the, um, the description. So we decided to apply um, and felt that with our, you know, our featured product that we may be special enough to win. So uh, we were very excited when we actually found out that we won. Um, I actually cried when we got the news. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually, it was a great opportunity and we're so honored to be featured by Alibaba.com um, and for recognizing us. Well, congratulations. I'm very happy for you. And I've seen your product is absolutely very innovative and very amazing. So we'll get to that later. Um, so, so I'd love to learn about your business story. Um, so you, how did you start? How do you find the product idea? How did you start the business? So we adopted our dog, Ginger, in March 2020, and we both live in Astoria, Queens, and we love to travel around the city. We love to run errands and just always be with our dog. And when we adopted Ginger, we realized that it was really hard for us to take her everywhere. And we did a lot of research, found that there was an issue and like an empty part of the market for urban consumers in the pets industry. So from there, Caesar, with a pen to paper, started sketching up. Imagine if we had a trailer that collapsed into a backpack and we can bring Ginger with us everywhere we go. And slowly but surely, years later, we were able to receive a utility patent for our, for our product. And we're hoping to launch and continue to create a lot of products where being in the city, you can have small, efficient products that fit in your apartment and you can travel with your dog or cat everywhere you want to go. Yeah, that's Awesome. So, so from a discovering and making a decision of launching products because you feel there's a need um, and there's a market gap, and of course your passion as well. Um, from the product launch to being a business owner, there's also transition too. So, how would you feel like being a pet small business owner? It, it's actually exciting because it's a market that we both love. Um, we both have had dogs our entire lives. Um, and for me, 
uh, when we, we adopted Ginger, Ginger essentially became my baby. Um, so I, I really, you know, I love my dog to death. Um, so like being, being able to create a product that allows her to be with me or have, uh, allow us to experience the city together, um, you know, I, I'm so excited to be a part of that. Even though it's, it's a struggle, it's a, it's a long journey, but we're very, very excited. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also how big is your business? Like how, how, how many people do you have like working with you on this business? So right now you're looking at the main team. <laughs> um, we have interns that come on board from various colleges in the States to support us while we're still pre-launch, yeah. um, knowing that we're going to be launching in the spring of this year. So everyone be yeah. on the lookout. Our team will be growing very quickly, but right now it's Caesar and I just yeah. working and yeah. getting this thing going. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, like a small business, um, you also have to do everything. It's just, you know, it's an, it's not like you're it's easier to run business just because it's a small business right so how do you guys just wear so many hats weren't you know running business and everything so how do you manage that uh <laughs> that, that is a great question no you're you're very right there's so many hats that we have to wear um luckily for for us we we work very well together um, mm -hmm. So you know we're we're blessed in that situation. Um, so we can kind of split the work between the two of us. Um, and a, a lot of our uh, viewpoints and um, ideas align. Um, so it is it is quite easy and uh, seamless for us to work together. Mm -hmm. But no, you're right. You know, on a day to day basis, you know, having to go from you know what should we post, um, what are our finances looking like, what is the next product, like what is the product design. You know, it's it's. It is definitely a lot to do on a day to day basis for sure. And it truly is two different sides of your brain with small business. Like you need the logistical, the finance, but you also need to stay creative and, and innovative and, and motivated. And, and Caesar and I are able to kind of lead into each other's mm -hmm. uh, experiences and interests. And we were able to, to really kind of split the roles in a way that makes sense for us. That's totally, totally. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. It's such a good, great partners. Um, so, you know, for small business like yours, um, a lot of people, um, we have a lot of buyers um, and also we're seeing a lot of entrepreneurs. They want to start something as well, maybe initially on the side and then, you know, gradually grow. But um, the failure of startups, um, the ratio is really high. And one of the main reasons is you know, they don't know what kind of products to sell. Um, when you have a good idea, when you find the, you know, the passion, but exactly how do you choose the product, right? You need to decide the pricing, um, you know, the color, the size, and a lot of things to come to it. So how do you make the decision to, you know, choose the products? So for, for us, um, when we first came up with the idea of the product that we have, which is the backpack that, I mean, the bike trailer that collapsed into a backpack, mm -hmm. um, it kind of, the, the brand kind of grew from there. Um, essentially, we wanted to be able to provide pet owners with the opportunity to just be outside with their pet. You know, in the city, there's so much to do. And nowadays, there are pet-friendly places popping up everywhere. Um, and so our mission is to strengthen the, the bond between a pet and its owner. And we feel like the best way to do that is through experiences mm -hmm. and exploring. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we, to pick our products, we kind of have to pick products that align with the brand that we are promoting. Um, so it's all about being outdoors and, and, and just being outside with your pet. You know, it's, that's kind of like the the overall guideline for how we decide to pick our products. And mm -hmm. I will say for people who are wanting to start a company too, reach out to friends, reach out to family, get into Facebook groups. You know, it's great to, to talk to people in your own surroundings, but for us, you know, we also wanted to hear from the public as much as we could and Facebook groups, things like this, where we can get into sessions and just hear other people and other business owners speak mm -hmm. like network all the time, because you never know who might either have another idea for you or can introduce you to the next partner that you knew that you needed, but didn't know how to reach them. So definitely mm -hmm. just, you know, to pick products, I would say research a ton, you know, read articles, see what's out there, see what isn't out there and, and really just talk to as many people as you can to gain knowledge and perspective and make sure that you're sometimes in small business, 
you're, you're so closed off on just working and you don't look up enough and talking to as many people as possible can get you to look up and maybe help solve the problem that you're, that you're facing. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. Um, you know, getting closer to the customers and getting feedbacks and, you know, just take advantage of your families um, and the people, you know, you know, that's, they're here to help you, right. You're not alone. People want to support right. you. Definitely reach out. I love that. Um, so, so when you decide what to launch, there's still, um, that just the first step, right? <laughs> so what are the steps you think are very important to know, um, when you launch products to the market, you know, other than just, uh, other than choosing the products? Um, well, it depends on what you're launching, right? For, so for us, because our product is brand new to the market, um, you know, we're, we're essentially innovating a a particular pet category that hasn't seen innovation um, probably ever. Um, so what we have to do is essentially, we, we have to have a, a, a solid mix of being able to market, but also educate the audience on why they need our product. Um, so for us, it's a little bit of a different, you know, route that we have to take um, in, in how we um, actually market and get our brand out there. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think also to to really be able to launch something successfully, try to get as much market research as you can to see what the market actually needs. Like you might feel like something is needed, but maybe there is something like that and you just haven't searched the right way. So market research is really strong. And I feel like in, in today's world, we all know that our friends are busy at work, but we actually don't know what they're doing. And I think leaning into our friends and gaining their knowledge from logistics or from shipping or from product development. Like sometimes people in our circles, we actually didn't realize could help us, whether it's e-commerce marketing, like things that we may not know are, are all of the steps to actually launch a product successfully. Like it's not just thinking of the idea, it's where is it gonna be built, which is where Alibaba.com will come into. And then how is it getting into consumers' hands and also what you're pricing it. And there's so much research that has to get done, but I think leaning on market research and leaning on just trying to get as much knowledge about your product and its competitors. And if it doesn't have competitors, find something that can be somewhat of a competitor to give yourself a base for that. Yeah, that sounds great. And I um, wanted to just, um, have a shout out to our audience, Robert. Um, and he said, Love Wagon. Yay. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> we have, yeah, we have your fun in the audience. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so you mentioned about um, using Alibaba.com. So I'm always curious um, when I talk to our customers, how did you find Alibaba.com? Truthfully, Google, um, you know, I, I was I was looking for, you know, we, we had our initial product line that we wanted to, you know, that we were launching with. But in order to build our brand, we needed to add a, a other products that, like I said before, fit our brand. Um, so finding suppliers that, you know, fit the bill and was able to provide us with multiple options, um, you know, even some options that we may not have thought of, um, you know, we were I was. Googling, you know, for days. Um, and finally, I, you know, I found Alibaba.com, um, went on it and was wowed by all of the selections, all of the suppliers. Um, it, it was a little bit, you know, initially it was a little bit overwhelming, but in a great way, right? I was able to just go through it, comb through it and see exactly what kinds of products we actually can source um, and, and provide for our customers when we're ready to launch. Yeah, that's yeah, you know, that's that's really good. Oh, I'm happy to hear you finally found Alibaba.com. Um uh, yeah. so so when you you know work with a supplier and when you well get on Alibaba.com or you know other places where you are looking for suppliers, um, how do you usually um like look for what do you look for in the supplier? Like what are the best quality that um or qualities or the features that you you look for? Right. Um, you know, for me personally, I'm a big like reviews guy. Like I, I actually do look at reviews a lot for, you know, a lot, just about everything in life. Um, and uh, for me, I like to see, you know, the different factories. I want to be able to see the 
um, type of supply, um, type of inventory that they have, uh, what kind of products that they can provide, and make sure that it's it's a very you know that it's a lot of different types in their categories, mm -hmm. um, not just one option or two options. I like to be able to you know scroll through and just see all of different things that they offer. Um, I like to see that they do have a good reputation with their buyers, um, and that's where the reviews come in. Um, so, you know, the, the higher the reviews, the I, to me, it feels like the more reputable that they are, even if they just started, you know, within the last year or so. Um, I like to have, you know, even um, even just reaching out to them, I like to see how quickly they respond back and how willing they're able to, you know, work with me, um, you know, with all the ideas that I have and just, you know, what being able to suggest items to me that I'm looking for. Um, so it's, you know, a lot goes into it. And I think communication is so important because Alibaba.com has made it so anyone can create a product if they have the idea. And the communication with the suppliers makes us feel more comfortable. They kind of help guide the way of these are the colors or that logo won't look good there. Here's a mock-up. Yes. And just really that communication helps us feel confident in what we're putting out to the market. Yeah, so communication and also kind of um, have a streamline and learning from the suppliers and seeing their catalog. Those are very, very helpful for, especially for startups, right? Because sometimes you don't have idea when you start. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've talked to a lot of buyers and none of them told me they they love the process of sourcing. So that's what we're figure, trying to figure out is, how can we make it so easy for them so they don't have to worry about it? So yeah. um, you would love to hear uh, more and more stories, um, you know, or questions or recommendations from the audience or from a buyer, you know, what do you want us to help you? How do you want us to help you? So we love to hear that all the time. So, <laughs> um, so I hope that Alibaba.com helped you support you in your journey and make it easier for you. Yes. And, and truthfully, with every supplier that I've actually spoken with, the level of professionalism that they, you know, show is, you know, it's awesome. It actually makes me feel a lot more comfortable as a buyer that what I'm getting is a quality product with a quality um, supplier and, and team behind me. And it's quick. Most of it is really quick. And you're able to work with the suppliers on MOQs and what you need and when you need it. And it's definitely something that has supported and helped us and will continue to do so. Yeah, sounds great. And you know what? We have a treat for you today. Um, you will definitely love to see this supplier coming on board in a few minutes. Um, before that, I want to hear about your um, thoughts about the pet industry. So what's your thoughts about this industry? Is this competitive? Is this like friendly? Is there like a community? Um, so how what's your thoughts on this industry? All, all of the above. Um, it is a very competitive market, especially uh, um, since COVID happened. Um, since, when COVID happened and everything was shut down, there everybody adopted a dog. Everybody got a dog as part of the family members. Um, and I think while these new pet owners were being working from home, um, they actually built a, you know, a relationship with their pup. Right? They it slowly became a member of the actual family. Um, you you fall in love with the dog. You know. It, there's a certain level of like care and joy that you know a dog gives you, even though they don't really know that they're giving that to you. Um, so it, it has become more and more. You see a lot more companies seeing that, um, and they're starting to put out new products, um, which is making it very, very competitive. But I will say, it is such an amazing community. Uh, there's so many, whether it's local or national events, and when it's anything to do with pets, everyone is so welcoming because everyone wants to play with each other's dogs and cats and see them and take photos. And it makes the community so friendly and so welcoming. And even if we're meeting with potential like competitors or people in the same type of line, they're still willing to talk to us and still willing to give their advice and you know just little snippets that will help us continue to grow. So although it is a very competitive industry, we are happy because we have a product that's not on the market yet. However, we are, you know, really grateful that the community is strong and supportive as well. Well, that's really good to hear. It's the right place to be um, yes, yes. in such a competitive market. Um, so how do you stand out from the rest? Right. Because you need attention from the customers. You need attention from the buyers. So how do you stand out? 
I will say being authentic is so important for any brand in the pets industry or any industry. Consumers want to hear our story. They want to they want to hear Caesar talking about his love for ginger. They don't just want to see photos on Instagram. So, you know, being competitive and staying ahead of it is really just being raw and authentic to our consumers and showing them how hard it is to source and how long these timelines take and really kind of pulling the curtain back on what it takes to build a business and build a product and and create a brand and by staying authentic and staying really true for to our consumers the community will start to follow you they'll start to enjoy the content they'll start to want to continue to get to know you buy your products support you and then it's just up from there yeah, a yeah. lot. A lot of it is, is a lot of it is being unique. Whether it's it is your products that you're offering, um, the voice that you're speaking from, um, or even the social uh, initiative that you want to support be- with your co- with your company. Uh, I think I think that has a lot to do um, with how you can attract more uh, more buyers and, yep. and a bigger audience. That's an excellent idea. Um, th- definitely being authentic, and that's your niche, right? Um, yes. So coming to 2023, um, you know, since last year, we have been talking to a lot of industry experts and, you know, um, everybody was saying, a lot of people saying, you know, in the news as well, there might be a recession coming up. And with reasons, a lot of things, inflation, um, the reports on consumer um, spending decrease or the recent events with um, the banking. Um, so yeah. do you see do you see that ch- hopefully, hopefully you, you're not affected and you know our audience are not affected? Um, it sounds scary. So do you see any challenges in your business or in this industry? Yeah, there's there's challenges for sure. I think the pets industry, as Caesar mentioned a little bit before, COVID kind of made the pets industry grow even more. So although people may want to save or take a step back and and things are a little bit unknown and scary at the moment, we know that our consumers are home with their pets, wanting to be outside, wanting to put, you know, their health first and bike around the city and and really kind of enjoy their own time and their own mental health as well. Mm -hmm. So although things in terms of timelines and production, manufacturing, you know, we definitely have to be flexible with that flexible and honest with our consumers if things are a bit more expensive than we would have hoped. Uh, But we do feel confident that even with some of these 2023 challenges and beyond, the consumers and and community that we have built are going to want to continue to support us as a small business uh, because they've gotten to know us and because they, you know, pets are not just a one quarter type of thing. They're a, you know, hopefully a decade plus. Uh, So, so, you know, in terms of the, the challenges for the year, yes, uh, manufacturing is is tricky and shipping takes long. And I think that's where the authenticity of, of us as a brand comes in, where we're talking to our consumers about that. We're letting them know all the updates so that we can stay on top of all of all of this. And, and they're aware of all the things we're learning because we are learning it at the same time that everyone else is. So as long as we stay true to that and authentic, we feel that we'll be able to overcome all those challenges. And, and, and truthfully, you know, the numbers really don't lie, right? Um, the pet industry has is one of the few industries that's actually seen consistent growth over the last 20 to 25 years. Um, and I think that, you know, that will continue. I've, I've read a bunch of different surveys about, you know, just kind of like asking pet owners how they feel about the recession coming up or even post-COVID. Um, and the numbers have pretty much stayed the same on how people feel about their pets. Um, so I think that that trend will will continue. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just a matter of you know staying resilient and, and just you know keeping you know keeping the message strong for, for your for your audience. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice for the small business owners. And you know we had um, the Alibaba.com. We have launched a white paper about um, you know the industry. Um, so we look at pets industry, and the survey shows people think the pets just like the babies, they are essential to people. So even though they're, you know, not buying more clothes for themselves, they're buying high quality products with a good price um, for their pets, right? So that's really good for um, people working in the industry. 
Yes. Yeah. I mean, and, and if you when you see a when you see a dog space, especially a very very cute one, all you want to do is just buy it whatever it wants. You know? so, <laughs> I, agree. <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah, that's true. I know that because I have two dogs. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and if you the audience, if you want to see more details uh, for our report, uh, we'll drop a link in the comments. Because uh, we, now we have to move on to um, the next next session and before that i want to do a shout out to uh, marilu so she says such an innovative idea congratulations sam cesar can't wait to see this take off and thank you alibaba for this opportunity for small business i uh, love that uh people love your idea um <laughs> thank you yeah we will share um their store website and also their social media in the comment uh very soon so definitely stay tuned um, so now I wanted to welcome Pat Star or Tian Yuan back. All right. I think you just got us right on the right time. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I just heard Cesar talking about the, the time in the pandemic and how people have grown closer to their pets. And that's actually where I, I can't agree more because me and my pets have never been closer. It's like my little baby. <laughs> and that, that inevitable lifestyle of having a healthy life and uh, exciting and outdoors and the fact that the pandemic is now behind us and all of that is possible. I just feel like it's that treasure time that I have with her, that being able to go outside to just yes. opportunities are limitless for the first time. Wouldn't you agree, Clement? Yeah, of course. So yes. um, what do you think of the most important is saying that you are going to focus when you seeking some outdoor accessories for the dogs? I would say probably durability, right? Yeah. Uh, from our perspective, it's also the durability because you're going to have very hard situation and in the very like sharp environment in the outdoors. So you're going to have a very durable uh, product to keep your dogs safe and having fun and hang out with you. So it is the most uh, uh, definitely top of the list we care about, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. not just the Instagram worthy pictures, is it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> The whole picture, all the uh, whole package, and yes. yes, it all adds up for these types of products. Whether it's the the carriers, the coats, or the paw protectors, yep. or whatever you are looking for, you're looking for something that's functional, that's good looking, that's good priced, and uh, most of all, it's durable. Because I don't want to buy yeah. and buy and buy again, right? <laughs> yeah. So for everything sure. that you can um, have a general say from so, our section uh, is so for the outdoors. Yeah, so I think um, I, yeah. I'm seeing like Cesar and Sam just like, wow, what are those, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. So are you guys going to give us a tour? Um, uh, we were about to actually, we were jumping the gun on you guys on that. Yeah. We got a bunch of cool products back here. Yeah. We got what our models. Those? We got a, a doggy ambassador here is going to come in for a second. Tango. Oh. Come on, so, buddy. So Sam is the, the, kind of uh, shy. As you yeah. guys can see, he's yeah. actually wearing a nice little raincoat too, keeping him warm for a little hike later on. Got a nice, oh, uh, uh, good looking, and very durable, stretchable uh, leash with him too. Very good looking guy over here, a much better model than I am, clearly. Oh. And as you guys can see, there's a variety of products back here in the wall, as well as one of these, whether we actually want to point out is the backpack. Isn't that true? Yeah. This backpack, backpack is also designed for the outdoor activities. And you can see that they all, the outside fabric is made by a very high quality Oxford fabric. You know, one of the most important things of the Oxford fabric is durability. And also, there are two bags on the back of this uh, harness. Uh, you can put your wallet, like waste dispenser of your dogs, and some uh, cell phone probably in there, and uh, it was also waterproof, so keep that things out of uh, wet in the raining day. Fantastic, yeah, yeah right. Uh, or even if you're one of those content creators, you can strap on your GoPro and get that great quality content, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so there's a variety of cool things that you can see on there, but there's other stuff too, like as you guys can see back here, we've got a couple of coats, but we also got a couple of bags and seats and things, whether it's for your car on the inside of your car, or a harness for a little life jacket for the little guy to go for a swim, a carrier, there's bags, there's a, a little disposable, uh, not disposable, sorry, reusable cup mm -hmm. for a, a water cup. Actually, I can probably uh, extend it for you guys, give you guys a better look for a little bit of a water bowl. 
there's just such a variety of products here. And this is just one of the many key things when it comes to this manufacturer is the variety that they offer. We mentioned before, uh, Clement, was it 30,000 products that you guys have on display? Yes. Wow. There's a variety here to see. And a, a key thing that we want to point out all the time is the fact that everything is uh, uh, recycled and eco-friendly and a lot of stuff, right? Very yeah. Good. So we, yeah, we earlier we talked about the trends of you know eco-friendly products, um, recyclable, and also you know like the products helping pets with anxiety. Um, so I want to kind of hear from Sam and Cesar. What do you think about the trends of um, in this industry? So what trends do you see? Um, you know, truthfully, there's there's actually been a lot of there's been a couple of, of big trends that are happening that we've noticed. Um, one, obviously, is the humanization of our pets. Mm -hmm. You know, our pet owners are trying to, you know, match with the dog. Um, so like matching coats has always been a thing. Um, but one of the bigger things and what's actually um, inspiring us to continue to build wagon um, is that people want to spend time with their pets. Right? They, they, they don't want to have to leave their pets at home. Um, being outdoors with their pets, either whether it's running errands or even just going to the park and just and playing with them is a big thing now. Um, they, people are loving their pets and just and just want to be with them. Mm -hmm. And they're wanting their pets to be comfortable. Like some of the products that we just saw here. I mean, if if when it's raining, I want our dog to have a raincoat, a, a sweatshirt. I want her to be warm. We have matching Christmas outfits with her. I mean, so some you know all of those products like are so great because you know if we're on the go, we want to have that that reusable or the the water you know bowl for her that's easy to store in a bag. So yeah. you know for us, I, I think the trend really is just to have the pets be part of the family and not something that or you know an animal that you leave home. It's they're always with you and they're just as comfortable as you are. Yeah, they're families, right? They really are. So you can just uh, imagine what uh, Cesar and his dog looks like in a matching outfit. <laughs> <laughs> you have to check out our Instagram to find out. It, it, it looks a lot better than it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you guys have a lot of outdoors products as well, right? Do you see the similar trends? Yeah, I can definitely see it. You can see, even if you've got a family of pets, that there's a variety of things uh, joining and they're, they're all matchy, like like Cesar said, or uh, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> you can see the matching outfits. If it's a Christmas photo or whatever, Samantha, sorry, mm -hmm. I was struggling to get there. But as Samantha mentioned, the Christmas photo of the group, you can see everybody matching. And it, whether or not you're going camping or you're going outdoors for a run or a hike or whatever it might be, you can get the whole functionality, durability, and matchy, Instagram worthy uh, right. package right. all set up for you. Exactly, exactly. What about the outdoor, um, like people going traveling and outdoor as well, like a long distance travel, et cetera. Do you guys, I mean, I, because right now I'm in, I'm traveling in Las Vegas and um, it's just like everything is so packed. So people are coming out and travel everywhere. So how mm -hmm. does it impact the pet industry? Well, uh, for the products that we see over here, you guys can see there's a couple of car seats and stuff that I can show you guys. Come check over here. There's a couple of car seats, especially if you're doing like a road trip, which I ideally want to do at one point with my dog, is if you don't want to have the hair and the problem with cleaning the car afterwards, there's such a variety of car seats that you can get. You get the easy cleaner one with, with the material that uh, Clement mentioned earlier, or if you've got a little smaller pup that maybe you actually don't want to actually move too much around in the car, you got the little box units that can also click into them to keep them all intact if you have a, like the, the harness to keep them safe. Uh, maybe you are actually a little bit more friendly or a little bit more open to the dog moving around. You got a bigger dog, but you don't want them necessarily to come to the front of the car. You also got that option, maybe a front seat cover. There's such a variety of things. And this is just for the car seats. I mean, this is just a, such a variety. I mean, there's also the, 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 comforty, the comfy ones, like the pillows. So if you're definitely doing a long distance trip, you can treat them with one of those and they can just sleep all the way wherever you're going. But the, with the matching harnesses and the fantastic coverage, I think you can't go wrong with, uh, with any traveling with your dog. Or cat for that matter, sorry. Or <laughs> cat, that's true. Yeah, so Sam, Cesar, do you guys... This is something that kind of what you are always looking out for and for some new ideas and like what um, like because your products is very 
like make it very convenient, right, for people to mm -hmm. use. And it's yeah. about convenience, efficiency. What's your source on those thoughts on those products? I, I think, you know, I think that they all the products, they look very well made. Um, they look like they would be a great addition to any pet owners, like, you know, host of products. Um, I would actually be interested in, in speaking more with the factory and, you know, the engineering team behind the factory just to continue, like, the, the design and build and creation of, of, of even more products um, that would, you know, help pet owners that are trying to go outside and, and you know, explore and travel. Um, you know, that, I, think that, I think they're great. And it's so great to see the variety of products, too, because what we always try to think about when we're thinking of new ideas is to how can it be used either multi different ways you know for for our hero products it's a backpack and a trailer for some of the mm. the car carriers can it also then be used you know in a tent for camping or on the plane mm -hmm. or can it be used in a taxi cab you know how can we take the products that are there and knowing that there's a variety of products at you know this factory it's like we can say okay we like this from this product this from this product how do we make it one so that mm -hmm. our user can use it in multiple different ways right yeah, and I mean, I if I may, I think Scissor, Scissor and Samantha have found the perfect manufacturer for this. Like we mentioned before, they offer so much in terms of customization and in terms of your business. If you come with the idea to Clement, I'm sure she has the facilities and the resources to assist you in creating your idea into a product. If you are looking for a dual functionality or a little bit of customization, color changes, your logo, whatever it might be, I definitely believe Clement has the resources to help you. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. I, and I, I want to just, yeah. <laughs> and I want to just give a shout out to Alzi. Um, what a power couple! No, ma uh, no matter what they do, it will be successful. Um, that's <laughs> such a sweet shout out. I agree. Thank you so much. And also shout out to Pastar, our supplier. Love it. Amazing to see by Felix. Thank you, the audience, for dropping the comments. And please do leave the questions. And you know, towards the end, we will choose the. Uh, lucky audience um, to send out some gifts. So definitely ask questions and we'll get to that. Um, so okay. yeah, yeah. So um, uh, uh, Johan, are you guys going like a, to a different thing or? Um, I, I have a, more, a couple more things to show you, Min. Go ahead. We got a smart section that I think I, you really want to see. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, so what is um so i think that's something it's also going trendy or something yeah so is this something you like sorry sam and um i think this is a question for sam and Cesar. oh sorry yeah, no no it's okay i, I was just kind of <laughs> um is this some, something you're seeing as a trend as well as something smart yes i i, I truthfully there, there's been so much innovation um in, in all aspects of the pet industry. Um, you're seeing a lot of, you know, smart feeders, a lot of, um, you know, smart devices that maybe cameras that you can, you know, watch your pet while they're in the home and interact with them. Um, but there's also uh, smart devices that are not digital um, that actually are, are able to help the pet just make it a lot easier, a lot more convenient to be a pet owner and to, you know, to just mm -hmm. interact with your pet. And getting outside too, there's so many, um, you know, new, I think like leashes and collars that if you're in a park, you can kind of create a boundary for your, your dog so that they're not having to stay, you know, in one area and they could still explore and you feel safe doing so. So, you know, when we think about exploring and adventuring with your pet, some of these new tech products are really helpful to not have your pet, you know, only four feet away from you at all times. Like they could still explore while you feel safe because you have the tech to keep them in an area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, I love that. I never realized there's a hands-free pro products for pets because I have two. I have two lish and they're always tangled. <laughs> <laughs> I just like how how could I not know about that? Um so yeah. anyway, so now we know and we just, you know, there are products that ideas that the suppliers and you know brand owners constantly come out with. So, you know, it's just such amazing world, but right. <laughs> really um, you also see um a growth in this market segment. Absolutely. Yes. You know, for when we think about tech, we think about your laptop, your phone, you want everything connected. So it's, it makes sense that that next step is to also be connected with your pet, right? So whether that's 
with their feeder, with a camera. You know, when we're out to dinner, we want to check in on Ginger, make sure she's still good. Is she sleeping? Is she on the couch? Is she where she's not supposed to be? You know, and we always want to be able to see everything. So I think it, it, it does make sense. And it's only going to continue to grow because everyone wants to have everything at their fingertips and wants it to be easy and self-explanatory and can share it with everybody. And, and, and it also has to do with, you know, safety as well. Um, I think, you know, a lot of the innovation that's happening um, has helped with, you know, maybe reducing losing your dog or the, the chance of losing your dog because you have maybe a Bluetooth collar or an air tag on the collar or something like that. But there, there's a ton of different um, aspects and like great, you know, ways that innovation is actually helping um, with pet ownership for sure. Yeah. So, Johan, you guys, um, you know, already in place. And what do you guys think about this trends? I couldn't agree more with Cesar and Samantha. I mean, I have a camera inside my house. I've got my dog with an air tag on. I, it's okay. it's fully digital, so it's no surprise. We're living in the digital era, and, and it's no surprise that we're just getting connected to our pets, whether it's through an app or a, a device or whatever it might be. But it's just continuous innovation. And just a couple of information, maybe a little bit of stats in terms of that way. Uh, according to research, the global smart pet product market size is, pre due, is projected to be around... 10 billion dollars 730 million so wow. that's a that's a massive number and that's by 2028 that's just five years away from now and that's about 21 percent cg cagr of uh the 21 percent 21 percent up uptake per year on that so it's just a a crazy exactly. amount that is going to be increasing towards and, and you can just you can just see the variety that we have right now and what it's going to be like in 2028 is just continuously going to be, whether it's toys or devices or whether it's a digital or not, it's a smart product, like uh, Cesar mentioned. It could yeah. be digital and could be connected to an app and could be connected to your phone or your laptop or whatever, or it could just be a, a smart device without any of the digital factors. Yeah. But uh, enough from me, let's hear from Clement herself. Well, um, as our perspective, we believe that the high technology could build a stronger bond between the human beings and their household pets. Um, you know, we are currently motivated by a lot of high technique techniques to make our uh, live easier and more convenient. And uh, as a member of this family, we, uh, pet ownership, was, would like to um, just let our pets just enjoy such service and also some with some automatic devices, we can also, also keep an eye on our pets when we are uh, you know, out of the home and maybe a long business trip. So we can yeah. stay, know they're safe and they're having fun and if they're feel well, like, like that. And uh, so um, with this kind of technique developing and this kind of uh, humanization um, as a the leader company, in this pet industry, we always keep that pace for, uh, of the trade. And uh, we have our production line, the uh, electronic items. So we can definitely go further with this road. Fantastic. Yeah. As you guys can see, we got a nice feeder here. We got a, a camera. We got a water dispenser. There's just such a variety out there already. But let's, uh, let's have a deeper look into the feeder itself. What do you guys say? Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Good. Sure. So as you guys can see, this is one of their smart products and it is connected to an app. Is that correct, uh, Clement? Yep. Um, it could be controlled by your phone. So when you are out of your home and you can still control uh, these devices to have the feeder and have the uh, fun playing with your dogs by control your phone. And also there's a kind of uh, voice recording and to have an interactive with your dogs. I mean, yeah. that's just playing into the fact that you guys mentioned that humanization of it, mm -hmm. right? Now, even though I'm not at home, I might be on a business trip and I'd be able to feed her, but also tell her, hey, hey, little baby, come on over, come on, <laughs> get some food, whatever it might be. It just makes it a little bit more personal than it was before, wasn't it? Yeah. It's incredible. Right. So, but guys, uh, regardless of that, I do want to remind all of our viewers today that we do have our elite partner event and it is on Alibaba.com. But the only way to get really true access to this manufacturer is by actually checking them out at the elite partner event. And it's very easy to do. 
if you're doing it on your app or your, your platform, uh, whatever it might be, whether it's the website, just type in Elite in the search bar. And then if you hit the enter, it will actually take you directly to the Elite uh, Partner event page. And from here, you can scroll through a variety of partners that have been chosen for this. And guys, this is not anybody who just applies. You get chosen for this, and it's a really rigorous process to get actually chosen. But regardless of that, here you will find a pet star listed uh, very high to the top already. And you can just click on them, and it will take you to the company profile itself on Alibaba. Now, in this way, in this page, I always, always encourage all of, all of our viewers to do your own research on here because from here, you can actually see so many things, whether it's the product, whether you want to get in touch with the manufacturer. You will check there's a messenger button down there that you can just click on. That will put you in direct contact with the manufacturer and the sales team. But also another cool thing you can check out is their company profile but on Alibaba itself. And you can see the company overview by clicking on the company uh, profile over there. Sorry, let me just see. Over there. Is it going? <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing it upside. There you go. I got it. So from there, it takes you actually to the company profile. And here, you can check out certificates. You can check out patents. You can check out so many things. And most of all, you can check out their VR showroom. So whatever I'm seeing here, you can see for yourself on your, on your own interface. And you can do your own uh, exploration. You can be, uh, what is it called? Exploradora or... Uh, <laughs> or the Explorer, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so from here, you can check out the products, whether it's the cat scratchers, cat houses, the smart products. All you got to do is just do a little bit of a tour, do a little bit of a walkthrough, and you can find everything I showed you guys and so much, so much more. That's incredible. That is awesome. Yeah, so that is just a, a, a little part of our our uh, interface but i implore everybody please guys go check it out go make sure to to check them out and uh, this manufacturer is called tnun uh, pet smart uh, that's just one of them uh, you guys got, gotta check out this the march expo is such a good event on alibaba.com but regardless of that tnun mm -hmm. does offer us such a variety of things but i guess min if there's any more questions from cesar what do you guys think Oh, it, it, all, all of those options look so amazing. I'm, I'm actually already thinking about uh, joining or looking into the the the, uh, the show space even more. That VR setting was super super cool. I I really do like that. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, there's a lot more to offer. So make sure yeah. you check their um, the supplier um, Pet Star Team Man's link in the comments. And then there's a lot more to share. And I want to do a shout out to um, Assessor and Sam. Uh, obsessed with wagon. I can't wait to get one from Brianna. Thank you so much for shouting out. And also a shout out to Team and Pestar. Um, you guys are awesome. It's great products from um, also someone named Cesar. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So yes, such amazing pet products for all kinds of pet owners from Yes. So that's great audience response for you know both of the buyers and you know our speakers and also our manufacturers. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So you have a lot. We'd love to learn more about um, you know your um, how did you guys increase you know the products line that um, you know in that kind of space. Well, in that case, I think it's best to hear from Clement herself because, okay. like I mentioned before to Alexis, and what I would definitely want to mention to to both Cesar and Samantha today is this manufacturer has such a such a long list of experience and and resources what they have been putting into their company that they have all of these things due to the fact that they offer customization. Isn't that right, Clement? Yep. You want to you want me to talk details about customization? Please do. Yep. Uh, we have a very strong designer team, which over like 30 person. And we offer the OEM and the ODM service to our clients. And also um, we have a very large printing room, which over 50 person to bring your thoughts into real. Yeah, so as, as uh, Clement mentioned, they've got the strong OEM and ODM services for that customization, whether you just have the idea that needs to become a product or you just want to customize an already existing design, innovate, tweak a little, change a little bit of colors, put a logo, whatever it might be. Maybe you see an opportunity but just with a better price with TNUM, mm -hmm. that's the way you got to go. They make it your own. That's, that's the best way about it. But also you guys offer so much in terms of certification, isn't that right? Yep. 
uh, for some normal factory audits, we have like ISO 9001 and some like uh, for the wooden parts is FSC and uh, some of the uh, uh, BSCI, like, 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 <laughs> sorry, like statural. And also some uh, testing reports, for example, uh, the GRS certification for the eco life section. And um, there's some rose testing reports for the uh, electronic items, you know, which suitable for the European and the USA and the, uh, also Australia market. Uh, guys, they, they put me through a, a little bit of a walkthrough of the facilities and I got to, to, to witness the test themselves. And you will be able to see that later in the live too. Mm -hmm. I actually mm -hmm. saw how they tested and how rigorous the testing process is. They got all these certificates for reason to uphold that international standard. They got so many patents on their products. It's just amazing. This is what you saw when you think about a high quality top tier manufacturer. This is the standard and that's the, that's the reason why they're on top of this list. That's why they're at the elite partner events. There's a reason for that. But uh, not only that, they also offer fantastic services, not just that customization, not just that certification, but also after sales. And that is a key thing to look into, right? Isn't that right, Clement? Yeah. So for the after sale, I would like to mention that uh, before that, we have a quality control department. We have a lot of QAs and uh, QCs to have the inspection to our uh, products. And for the after sale, we got office in like USA, UK, Germany, and Chinese, China, Hong Kong, and uh, Japan. So you'll find our works all over the world. Fantastic. So don't worry so, for that. So Cesar, you guys are sort of with a, with a facility right by your, at your back door. No worries in that regard either. Mm -hmm. And then finally, also, they got a fantastic supply range. You guys just saw a couple of the pet products here. You saw all of that beautiful outdoor products they got, we got. They got so many products, mm -hmm. so many ranges, so many lines. And then they offer that customization. Clement, tell me more about these ranges. Well, actually, currently we have like over 30,000 um, items, uh, not including the same style. And uh, uh, we provided the choices like various from pet beddings, like trees and toys, accessories and litter box or whatever. So we are definitely your, um, the best choice for the clients to finish the one stop purchasing line. Sort of Fantastic. Place. And I think Min mentioned it earlier in the live, but they actually are offering a fantastic deal today. They got up to 50% discount on this live stream. Uh, so all you guys got to make sure is to place that order today. And again, OEM and ODM services available. So whatever it might be, make sure to make benefit of that. Yeah. I, well, I'm sure like I can see Sam's face is like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> so <laughs> love it. Now. Um, what do you guys think? Anything, yeah. um, any products specifically you're interested in? Tru truly, I, truthfully, I, I can't wait to explore their, their, their website a mm -hmm. lot more. Um, it sounds like they would literally be the perfect partner for us and, mm -hmm. and we will we'll continue to like work with them. Um, they, I, I love the idea of how much, how many people that they have working for them, whether it's in the, in the design team or the printing team, um, because for us, one of our main focuses is also, you know, not only um, providing products, but also creating products that we feel would be, you know, that pet owners would love. Um, so it, it sounds like they have the perfect team that can, uh, to, can get us to that point. And how incredible that Alibaba.com is partnered with, with this, with this supplier, because it, you can make so many new inventors like these small businesses can really start with this variety like there's no reason to not follow your dreams you can have access to this amazing opportunity of customization the different SKUs, and really the sky is the limit for so many people including us yeah you guys are awesome <laughs> yeah that's uh we get that a lot of comments from the audience as well this is great and so i want to um kind of get to sam and set do you guys have like when you usually talk to suppliers, what kind of questions you ask them? Like if you um, like certain products, um, how do you like start a conversation or ask the questions so we can have them um, help you with that as well? Yeah. yeah. So I, when I when I reach out to uh, to, to suppliers and, and start the conversation, I like to just see um, one, whether or not or how customizable uh, we're able to make the products um, to make make it more uh, brand you know, brand focus to us. Um, but also I like to see what the MOQ is. Um, uh, what are the, what is the price and price per unit? Um, what is the lead time on, on how to create it and, and, and you know, ship it to us? Um, there, there's like a, a ton of questions that 
that I, you know, I go through um, with the supplier before we actually even, you know, start to, to place the order. <laughs> and seeing if we can get samples, you right, know, thinking right, about durability, right. thinking about the look and feel of something, it's it's so hard to to make those decisions without touching it, feeling it, seeing how, you know, can it break, can it not break, does it look good on our dog? Right. Um, so being able to have samples as well before going into production is really important to us too. Well, I can I can assist you guys with the answer on that. It's very simple. Uh, in regards to the MOQ and the price, of course, that just varies on which product you're going to choose at the end of the day, right? If you're going to look at your pet feeder, it's going to be a little bit of higher price than, for example, a collar would be. Isn't that right, Clement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the MOQ could be lower. That's right. So it's a trade-off, right? The higher the price, probably the lower the MOQ. At the same time, samples is such a key thing. You always want to taste before you just dive in at the end of the day. And then, therefore, if you purchase the sample, sometimes the, uh, the supplier will offer you a free sample. All you got to do is bear the fright. It depends on what the product is. It is such a variable answer in, in terms of that, as well as for the lead time. It depends on product-specific, all these types of details. But regardless of that, the, the customization, the OEM and ODM part in terms of developing your own brand. I, I believe the possibilities are pretty much endless in this regard. This is what the manufacturer prides themselves in. They have all of these facilities to cater for these types of things. So if you're looking to change up the color, you want to just add a logo on there, or you want to change the design or the mold, you want to add up with, uh, with a new interface, whatever it might be. Maybe you want to add like 10 new features to make your product the top of the range the luxury Bugatti Lamborghini in the market, you can do that. It's, it's up to you. You just have to get in touch with the manufacturer. And it's very easy to do that. I can teach you guys how. It's very, very simple. All you got to do, again, on your interface, if you want to type it through the Elite Partner, it's a it's way to go. But essentially, where you want to get out is get to the company profile, right? Once you get to the company profile, that's the pet star ready on the radio for you. You want to get into that contact now button. There's a messenger down here. Uh, down here, you can click on that. And then also, uh, there's uh, so many other features, whether you just get to the profile, get into the inquiry, get in touch with them directly, and tell them exactly what you're looking at and how much you're looking at into it. And I guarantee you there's a sales team lady, whether it's Clement herself or somebody in her team, somebody's going to assist you with all your questions. Yeah, no, I think I think that's great, and I, it, it seems to me as though like the team that uh, that are, is behind all of these products has a, has a uh, the same kind of creativity as we like to pride ourselves on. So, you know, I think with both of our minds combined, we can definitely come up with the the Bugatti of uh, of pet products. You know? <laughs> no um, doubt, for sure. <laughs> Min, do you have any questions for us? Yeah, well, thank you for that. And I have some questions and comments from the audience. That's awesome. Um, so I think this is a question. Um, well, you already answered you some samples. Of course, you will offer samples. You even said free, yeah? I like that. Um, <laughs> it's always good. Um, but, you know, it depends on the product. So definitely reach out to the supplier, and then they will let you know exactly how the sample process work. Um, and also someone, Bob, asked, how can I get your items? And he just answered that, right? How to message in them, how to ask questions and inquiries. And also, um, I think another question is um, for um, Sam and Cesar, do you use a specific company for shipping? Um, so I think that's kind of a logistic company about shipping. Or maybe... Uh, you know, Clement, you can help with, with that as well. Like, how do you help the buyers get shipping? Yeah. Well, I mean, if, well, if the question is to us, um, you know, we we essentially we work with a with a supplier to see uh, what shipping is kind of best for them. Um, you know, they're, they're very cognizant with uh, you know the prices and everything like that. So if if we don't need the product right away, they're able to offer um, shipping that is a little bit less expensive, but it will take a little bit longer to get mm -hmm. to us. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I believe. You know, with um, Alibaba.com and the suppliers that we that we've worked with, they use anywhere from DHL or FedEx, um, UPS are, are the main ones that that they've worked with for us. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, I also think the question was the if we use B two B or B two C when we first started mm -hmm. our business. So Wagon is is still pre launch. We're launching in the springtime. So as of now, it's been all B two B with our suppliers and you know all of the people that we've met with Alibaba.com. So we are going to be going into B two C soon when we launch. So going back to my networking, Michelle, if you do have a contact, 
shoot us a DM on Instagram because we still haven't locked in who we'll be using yet. For sure. mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, Clement, how do you guys help the buyers with shipping? Well, it just depends on if you like place the order in the Alibaba.com. It was a very small quantity. Um, we would like to ship them by uh, some delivery company like UPS, FedEx, or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. This kind of things uh, the scissors just mentioned. Mm-hmm. And uh, for some uh, big clients, like they all place at least a 140 high cube container, mm-hmm. we would like to, um, it depends if they have their own logistic company. So if they don't have, we'll get them one. And mm-hmm. of course it depends on what kind of payment term we offer to them, uh, what we have the agreement for the payment term. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, the FOB port and some CIF ports, it's, it, uh, the differences of, of them uh, mm-hmm. is, uh, the FOB is not including the shipping cost. The mm-hmm. CF including the shipping cost. It depends on our clients' uh, requirements. Difference. Right. So the trade terms. Um, so for some startups, you don't want to deal with the shipping. You can just choose DDP, which is delivered to your door, and just the yeah. cost and the you know the manufacturer will um, include the shipping cost into that and deliver to your door. It's probably easier to start, right? So um, for okay. sure. Yeah, so I know we're running out of time. Um, and then we have audience asking if we can continue doing the tour and see your product. <laughs> you know what? Um, that's your lucky day because after this, we're finished up in the, in two minutes. But um, definitely click on the link. Uh, we'll drop in the comment. Click on the link from uh, Past Star, and they will continue to do live streaming. And it's very interactive. You can tell them, hey, zoom in, zoom out. Let's do a tour. They will do it for you. So definitely click the link if you want to continue the tour. Um, but for our event today, uh, we probably have to end up very uh, very soon. So um, before we kind of finish up, um, I want to ask um, Sam and Cesar, like give the audience one final question, final advice for small business owners. Last one. Well, if you are looking to start a business, um, go for it. It is going to be scary at first, um, you know, but nothing, nothing worth it is, is not, is easy, you know? So just go for it, figure out what your, your niche is, what is your passion, what products you want to sell. Um, and truthfully, there are, there are platforms and companies like Alibaba.com that, that are, you know, very, very user friendly and able to support you, whether you're just starting out or whether you have a million sales. Um, you know, it's all about just using your network, uh, you know, doing as much as you can and, and you know, just kind of just working, working at it and just being resilient. And I would say find your why. Why are you starting a business? Why are you doing this? Because you will have to be your own motivation and it is hard. It's worth it, but it's hard. So if you can figure out why you're doing this, remember that put it on your wall, put it on your mirror, continuously remind yourself why you're doing this because it will be worth it in the end. Great advice. Thank you so much. Um, and also for this session, you know, we will continue inviting people such as, such as Sam and Cesar to join us and share more. So we want to hear from the audience your feedback, um, you know, how we run this event, how do you want us to do it in future? So we're going to drop a link of our survey so just take two minutes um give us some feedback we'll continue improving and make it better and also we want to drop um the in social media accounts and website of wagon so we will share with that in the audience as well um we get a lot of great feedback from the audience about your brand and best luck to you guys and congratulations again i look forward to see seeing your success in future hopefully we'll see you again thank you yes, thank you so much good luck guys good luck bye yeah. Thank you. And um, so anything else, um, Rohan, before we close out the, the call, anything else to add? Well, uh, me and Clement definitely have so much more to show you guys. So I hope everybody sticks around and stay with us because we yeah. have so much more that we want to show you. But we want to thank Cesar and we want to thank you, Min, for having us. We absolutely had a great time having a, a, a webinar with you guys. And you guys were so so helpful for giving us the opportunity to showcase, once again, one of the best manufacturers in the industry, <laughs> in the world, pretty much. So it's absolutely just a phenomenal honor. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I have on my side. But just thank you, and thank you for giving us the opportunity. 
All right, sounds good. And definitely check out the link in the comments and then continue watching the tour. And well, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye.